water and air. Why do gyoza go soggy if we don't eat them quickly? And why do my glasses steam up when I come in from the cold? And when you breathe on a mirror, why does it get misty? And what do these questions have to do with buildings? Well, they're all about condensation, which is the biggest enemy of buildings, probably, is moisture, is water. Um, and here are some questions I'd like you to just estimate. Just have a think about how much air is there in your room. Just look around your room. And uh, how many cubic metres of air do you have? And how much water do you think there is in your room? Just uh, have a guess. Uh, make a note somewhere. Um, and later we'll maybe try and calculate this. Um, so, the amount of water in the air, um, this is also called absolute humidity. Um, it's usually measured in grams per cubic metres. So if you have a cubic metre of air, how many grams of water are in there? And, uh, and we know there's water in the air because when we breathe, um, we get mist on mirrors. Um, and if we get a cold drink, um, then we get condensation on the side. That's coming from the air. It's not sweating. Um, so we know the air holds water, but how much water can the air hold? Um, and this takes us on to what's called relative humidity, which is the way we usually measure humidity. And relative humidity is a percentage. It's not a number of grams, it's not a number of kilograms, but it's a percentage. It's how much um, compared to the maximum that the air has of moisture. Um, and so let's just think about um, temperature and humidity. And just um, just for a moment, forget about water and air and think about, forget about air and water and think about water and sugar. And if you have a cup um, with sugar, you're trying to dissolve sugar in water. Now, if you heat up the water, um, the sugar will dissolve. So as water gets hotter, you can dissolve more sugar in the water. And it's the same with air. As air gets hotter, it will take, it will hold more moisture. So hot air holds more moisture. And as air gets colder, it can hold less moisture. Um, so this is humidity. So air can hold water vapour. And hotter air can hold more water vapour, colder air can hold less. Um, and here's a graph. And as you can see, it gets, it's not a straight line. As water gets, as air gets hotter, it can hold more and it can hold much more. Um, it gets to about one kilogram of water per kilogram of air when you get to about 90 how much is that? 93 degrees centigrade. So as the air gets hotter, it holds much, much more. Um, for if we're looking at temperatures in and around our building, we're usually in a range somewhere from about minus 10 centigrade to about plus 30 centigrade. And that's the amount of the grams per kilogram. So how many grams of water can you hold in a kilogram of air? And very roughly, um, at freezing, it's about four grams per kilogram. And every 10 degrees, it doubles. Um, very roughly, this is a, a rough idea. So if you go 10 degrees warmer, it's twice as much. Another 10 degrees, it's twice as much again. Another 10 degrees, it's twice as much again. Um, and so we can look at the humidity 
and water vapor and temperature. So the blue line um, is 100%. So that's the amount of moisture the air can hold. Uh, it doesn't go above that line. Um, and if you have 75% or 50% or 25%, those are the different humidity lines. So as you get hotter, um, what happens then, um, if the air gets hotter, the relative humidity will go down if you have the same amount of moisture in the air. So let me just show you, um, this, is, um, this is a temperature and humidity. Um, this is um, measured in my house, in fact. Um, the bottom lines are the temperature, the top lines are the humidity. Um, the blue line is outside. So as you can see, the humidity outside is going from around 40, a bit less than 40, up to almost 100%. Um, and the bottom line is the temperature. So as you can see, as it's getting hotter, the relative humidity is dropping. And as it's getting colder, the relative humidity is going up. Um, the same thing is happening inside. Um, there's less variation inside um, because the house is insulated. Um, but still, as the temperature goes up, the relative humidity goes down. And the absolute humidity is not changing very much. So the same amount of moisture is in the air. But as it gets, as the temperature drops, um, it's getting closer to the absolute limit of humidity, the saturation, the saturation point. Um, so that's what's happening. So humidity is a bit confusing. Um, and the amount of moisture is not changing. But if the temperature changes, the relative humidity does change. And if you have the same relative humidity, if the temperature goes up, then that means you've got more moisture in the air. And if the temperature goes down, if the relative humidity is the same, that means you have less moisture in the air. So this is just um, absolute humidity, relative humidity, and we need to just understand how these things work. Um, so next thing to think about then is what happens if, what's the ideal humidity level? Um, what problems do you get if you have a very low humidity, if it's very dry? And what problems do you get if humidity is very high, um, if, it's, if the air is very moist? And I wonder which one do you think is worse? Uh, maybe you need to go away and think about this for a moment. And then we'll look at the answers. So um, low humidity, if the humidity is very low, then our skin can get very dry. Uh, we can get sore throats. Um, for the building, if it's very dry, the wood can crack because it's not, um, it's not moist enough. Um, wood is a natural material. Wood is used to having moisture inside it. So if it dries out, it can be not good for the wood. Um, high humidity um, will make it feel hotter, as we talked about before. Um, this We may like it if it feels hotter. In the summer, we may not like it to feel hotter. Uh, bacteria and mould like humidity. <laughs> so if it's humid, the mould will be happy and the mould will grow more, grow more. And also we get more bacteria, uh, probably more viruses if it's more humid. Um, and we also get condensation. And condensation can be very bad news for our building. Um, what can happen then, if we, have a, if we think of a wall, let's say it's 20 degrees inside, 50% humidity, and it's freezing outside, 40% humidity. If we have an insulating layer, we, we'll get a nice um, a nice gradient of temperature going down from 20 inside to zero outside. And if we start having hot air going through the insulation, um, what can happen to the humidity then is this. As the humidity goes up, um, we, as the air goes through, the temperature's dropping, um, the humidity is, the relative humidity is going up. And at some point in the wall, if there's a temperature drop 
Remember, a temperature drop of 10 degrees means a doubling of humidity. And that, if we start off at 50%, if we double that, it's 100%. And we can't have more than 100% humidity. So what happens is the moisture starts falling out of the air, just like it does when you breathe on a mirror or when I come inside with my cold glasses on a, on a winter day. Um, so at the point where it's hitting 100%, we start to get condensation inside the wall. Um, and this is very bad news because that means the wall is going to get wet. And if it gets wet, we can have all, all sorts of nasty things happening. Um, so just on this graph, what's happening here is we're starting off at inside 50% humidity, 20 degrees. And then we're moving along there. So the amount of water vapor in the air is not changing. But as we get colder, um, we hit 100%. And that's what's known as the dew point. Um, so how do we stop this? Um, how can we stop condensation within insulation? What we need to do is we need to stop the airflow. The reason we're getting condensation is because hot air is moving through the insulation out of the building. Um, so what we need to do is add a vapour barrier. So if we have a barrier there, we still get the nice um, temperature gradient. But if we stop the hot air, um, then we're not going to get any hot air going through the wall. So we don't get high humidity inside the wall. Um, so tightness is very important. If we're going to have insulation, we need to stop the air. Otherwise, we're going to start getting condensation and water building up inside the wall. Um, so we'll get condensation. If we have hot air passing through insulation, we will get insulation. If we have a cold spot on the wall, um, we'll get condensation if there's some spot on the wall that's cold. If we get cold surfaces, um, if you have uh, single pane windows, then you're going to get condensation on them. Uh, they'll be colder, they'll be cold surfaces, um, there'll be condensation. Uh, so that this will happen. Uh, will we get condensation on a wall? It's, so if the temperature is below the dew point on a wall, we will get condensation. So the next question then is how hot are your walls? And to, to think about this, let's start off just thinking about a paper wall. We've got a very thin bit of paper. Let's say this paper is so thin that it has no insulation effect at all. So what's the temperature of this surface then? And we have to think about um, what it's doing. And what it's doing is it's basically stopping the air. This is called surface resistance. And if we have uh, even a very thin wall, if it's stopping the air, there's a little layer of stopped air on each side of the paper. And because the air is stopped, it has some kind of insulation effect. Um, so we will get some kind of temperature gradient where the air is stopping. And we can measure this. This is a surface resistance. So this is an R value, not a U value. And on the inside of the wall, um, it's usually 0.13 meter squared Kelvin per watt. On the outside, it's 0 0.04. So there's a higher resistance on the inside. Um, why do you think the resistance is higher on the inside? The resistance on the, on the inside is higher um, because the air outside, there's usually more wind outside, and usually the air is thinner, is the air is stiller inside. So usually we get more resistance on the inside and less resistance on the outside. So there's a uh, another way to look at this is there's a there's a thicker layer of stopped air on the inside and maybe a thinner air of a thinner layer of stopped air on the outside. So what we can do then, if we have a wall, we probably, our wall is probably 
thicker than paper and it it will have some kind of R value, so the wall will have some kind of resistance. So the total of our wall then, we've got three layers. We've got the inside resistance, the wall, and the outside resistance. Um, so we can add up these resistances. Um, if there's a ventilated air screen, um, if you've got an area under the house, the resistance is slightly better. Um, if the house is on the ground, there's no surface resistance, it's just gonna conduct. Um, so we have different, there is slightly different surface resistances. So if we want to calculate the surface temperature, we need to think about the heat flow across the whole wall, and then how much of that heat flow is there across the surface. Um, and we need to look at something like this. Um, so here we have, um, we want to know the black line. What's the temperature of the black line? Oh, so the, as far as the humidity is concerned, the humidity is going to stop when it gets to the black line. Um, if the temperature drop is enough, then it will get to the dew point. If the temperature drop is smaller, we won't get to the dew point. Um, so we work, we work this out, we need to think about the temperature inside. Uh, Ti is the internal temperature. Te is the external. External means outside. So we've got Ti and Te. And we need to kind of work out the temperature across the whole of the wall and the two surface resistances. And then just work out the temperature just as far as the wall without the resistance inside. And that will tell us, that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find TSI, that's temperature for the surface inside, internal. Um, we can calculate this. Uh, watch out, there's an equation coming. Um, we can calculate this. Uh, we can use what's called the, the temperature factor. And this is the ratio of the resistance in the wall plus the outside surface resistance over the resistance of the whole wall plus both surface resistances. Um, and we can then use this factor uh, to work out what the surface, the inside surface temperature is. So we just, we're working out basically what's the ratio, how much of the temperature drop is going on as far as we get to the inside compared to the total temperature drop. Um, so the question then, we can work this out, and if the surface temperature is less than the dew point, then we will get condensation. Um, so uh, we can go away and work this out. Um, there is a problem for you to work out. Good luck. So what about the summer then? We've been talking, um, it's now October, it's starting to get quite cold, and my main worry is cold weather. And my main worry now is the humidity inside the house getting through the walls and making the walls wet. Um, in the summer, we kind of have the opposite problem. So this is the situation in the winter. Um, it's maybe 20 degrees inside, zero outside. We've got a nice layer of insulation to keep us warm. We've got a, a barrier here to stop the air from getting through and our wall will be fine. We're protected from condensation. Um, this is a typical um, situation of the range of temperature and humidity inside and outside and the comfort zone. And usually it's colder than the comfort zone outside. And usually it's colder and often it's more humid. Sometimes it's hotter and more humid outside. Um, of course, different places are different. Uh, you may live in a place where it's humid all the time, where it's hotter and more humid the whole time. Um, you may live, a lot of Japan is both cold in the winter and hot and humid in the summer. 
So what if it's hot and humid then outside? Um, so this is the opposite situation. We've got we're 25 degrees inside. Um, it's 35 degrees outside and 80% humidity. Um, so what happens then is there's a danger that the hot air will start moving in. Um, and if this happens, um, we have a danger area here as the humid air goes through the wall. Um, so I guess um, we could put the vapour barrier on the outside rather than the inside. Um, we would then be okay for the summer, uh, but not okay for the winter. Um, another thing we can do is put a smart vapour barrier on the inside which lets the moisture into the house so it can dry out. Um, what happens with um, vapour, so another way to look at humidity is to look at it as vapour pressure and the, the water vapour will move from high pressure to low pressure. It's a bit like heat moving from where it's hot to where it's cold. Humidity will move from where it's more humid to where it's less humid. Um, so there's always there's a constant danger of humidity moving. And it will generally move from where there's more humidity to where there's less humidity. Uh, we can look as well um, what's happening over time, because, of course, over time, things are changing. We don't just have a situation where it's the same temperature and humidity the whole time. Um, through every day, the temperature is rising and falling. Humidity can rise and fall. Uh, we may get rain. Um, and there are some software. This is a software that's called um, Woofy, uh, made in Germany. And what this does is you can put in the data for a year or a few years, and it will look at how your wall performs and whether moisture is building up. Because, of course, moisture, if the wall does get wet, um, it then needs to dry out. So there are two ways that moisture can pass through a wall. Uh, one of them, which we've been talking about, is by the air being humid, and humid air carries moisture. And if the air passes through the wall, it's going to bring moisture into the wall. The other way is diffusion. Um, and this is um, if you put... Um, if you if you get a material wet, then the moisture is going to find its way through the material. Uh, so, for example, I've got a I've got a glass here with some water and a bit of paper in it. Um, and wetting the biggest danger for walls to get wet is humid air because humid air carries quite a lot of moisture in it. Um, and the way that walls get dry is usually by diffusion so they get dry by the water passing through the material and then evaporating from the material into the air. Um, humidity is always less than 100% um, so it's always possible for materials to dry out into the air. If it's very humid it's more difficult and the drier the air is the more likely it is to work. Um, and if you have so the the Danger. The danger is if your wall is getting wet faster than it can get dry. It must be possible for it to dry out quicker than it can get wet. Um, so the ideal wall then, we want our walls to stop the air. And especially in a humid country, we want the walls to allow moisture to get out and diffuse out. And some materials do this. Um, uh, for example, um, paper. I've just got this some um, this uh, this in here. We can see um, if you look carefully that the the moisture is starting to to move up the paper, and of course paper is um, is airtight. So if we try and um, is relatively airtight. If we try and blow. It's difficult to blow through paper. So paper is an example of a material. Um, I'm not sure if I recommend you, you build a house from paper, um, but it's an example of a material that does have some air tightness 
but also allows moisture to get through. Um, so, just to summarise then, um, and let's look at the opposite. If we wanted to get condensation, then what we would do is we would either have an airtight building with no insulation, um, and for example, if you have if you have a single pane glass for your window, then you're going to get condensation on that um, in the winter because the, the it's stopping the air, it's cold, it's not insulated, it will get condens condensation on. Um, or if you want to get condensation, then you can have an a layer of insulation that's not airtight, then you'll get air going through, passing through the insulation, um, and at some point, at some time, it will drop um, below the dew point, and you'll start to get condensation inside your wall. You'll get moisture building up in your wall. You'll get bacteria and mushrooms growing in your wall, which is not a good thing. So um, we don't want this. What we do want is both insulation and air tightness. Um, and a little insulation is a dangerous thing. So if we do add insulation, we need to be very careful how we are adding it and where we are adding it. And be very careful that we also make it airtight. Otherwise, we'll be in trouble. Um, so um, let me just leave you with a puzzle. Um, this is a humidity puzzle. Um, this is a recording of temperature at the bottom and humidity in red. Um, and usually, as we saw, if the temperature goes up, the humidity goes down. If the temperature goes down, the humidity goes up. Um, this is not happening here. What we've got here is as the temperature goes up, the humidity also goes up. As the temperature goes down, the humidity also goes down. Um, so what's happening here? Why is this? Why are we getting this? Uh, just to give you a bit more background, this is in the summer, um, and this was the situation um, outside and inside. Um, so outside, it's going from uh, something around 20 degrees to over 35 degrees outside. Um, inside, it's around 25, 27 degrees. And the humidity, as the temperature outside goes up, the humidity goes down to around 40. And the temperature goes down in the evening, the humidity goes up to almost 100%. Um, so these are the conditions for this strange thing to happen. And there's, an, there's a wall that's insulated. Uh, on the inside, there's um, a barrier, a smart barrier. And um, we're measuring this. This is measurements from the inside of the wall. So um, what's, um, what's going on then? Um, I'll leave you with that problem to think about. And um, here are some references. Here are some more references. And that's all.